so. So what you see right here is a React Native app. This app is actually running vanilla React Native. So this is not Expo or anything like that. And the aim of this video is not to do a tutorial, but to showcase how I used Redux Toolkit in this app. Everything still a work in progress, but everything has been set up. So I just wanted to showcase to you how I did it. And I'm also going to put the link to the code in the description so you can actually play around it yourself. You can fork it and actually do like some great stuff with the code. You don't have to code from scratch. This app that you see here, it's an e-commerce app. So it actually has a uh, bottom tab, tab navigation. It also has top nav navigation as well. So you can see the different screens. And then we also playing with APIs here. So we fashion the data from an API and displaying it in the app. Um, from here, if you have an item, you can actually press on the item. Let's say you can press on an item and then you can add to the cut go back and I go to my cart, you'll see the item I just added there. You can increment the count, you'll see the numbers will increase there. Increment the count, the numbers will increase. And you can also remove items from the shopping cart itself. So the numbers will reflect accordingly. You can decrease, uh, if you less than one, it will uh, be deleted. So if I go back here and I go to another item and I add this item, it should appear when I go to the bottom tabs, press on, on, on the cut, we should see that item there. Cool. But how do I do this and how did I implement Redux Toolkit for this app? So I'll go to the package.json to show you that we're actually using a Redux Toolkit. So what, what you'll see here is that you'll see Redux Toolkit, the version that I'm using. Apart from this, uh, we also have, you'll see here, we have React Redux, and then we have Redux Persist. So what Redux Persist does is that it allows us to actually save the records of this item in the local storage of the phone. So that means then if I like, quit on this app and then go back to it, we should have records of that app. Like it should save records of my cut. So one day save. And then if I go to the cut, we see that we still have that item that uh, we added to the cut. So that's what Redux patch sys does. And then Redux toolkit I told you about. And then the other items here, they assist with the app. So, so what happens? So we have the React Native async storage. That's the package that we're using to save the record of the cut. Okay, cool. So we also have on the cut as well, like the material top tabs, the bottom tabs, uh, the native navigation and the stack navigation. Um, what else we have as well? We have React Native safe area context. This allows us to keep, to prevent the screen from going into the status bar. So everything will remain within the safe area view. So this is what it does. The reason why I'm using safe area context here is because it works on both uh, Android and iOS. And there's also like a web version of it. So that's why I went for it. So tab view as well, uh, React Native icons, that's what we use in those ones as well. And then we're not gonna focus much on the dev de dependencies for now. Okay, cool. So wh what I can do is that I can first start here. This is the app.js. So app.js, you'll see a couple of things that um, 
probably you'll first ask yourself what's happening at first if you're not familiar with Redux Toolkit and async storage. So what happens here is that if you're gonna use Redux Toolkit on your app or you're gonna use Redux in, in general, you have to wrap your app in a provider. So you can see that we're importing this provider from React Redux. So that means that when, when, you, when you first install React Redux, you have to first wrap your app in a provider. What the provider does is saying that the provider wraps your whole app. So in this case, my whole app is this one. It's like it's the root navigator. So the root navigator contains all the screens that in my app. So I've wrapped my whole app in this uh, provider. So the provider is saying that it, 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 it wraps our app so that we're able to uh, transfer state across the, the app. So that means then we can transfer data across the different screens, across the different components without having to use props, for example. So because everything is, is inside the provider, the state will be shared uh, nicely amongst the different uh, components. Um, if you conf if you're familiar with uh, with um, with uh, Redux uh, with React context, this is exactly the same method that is happening. But by with uh, with context, you can actually pass around data across the app, but then your app should be wrapped in a provider. This is exactly the same thing that we're doing here, and then you'll see again that we have this passes gate. And then the passes gate, we, we're importing it from uh, Redux persist integration slash React. So what persist gate does is sort of like similar to a provider, but it's not really similar. It's not really the same. But what, what, we, what uh, persist does is that it actually you're wrapping your, your app, and then the, the values within that app, within your app, which you want to save into the phone's local storage or your computer's local storage as well. So it allows you to sort of like get a reference of it and say anything between anything between uh, these two components, which is, which, is, which is in your app, the, so, so any, anything between the the the, the, the two pieces gate will be can be persisted if I can say it can be saved. Uh, so you have to raise, uh, wrap it in, in a you have to wrap it in a pieces gate. So and then after that you have to point it to the persister, which is persister is it's persister will actually take a value or component and this here it's taking the, the persistor from the persistor we'll talk about the persistor in a bit as well so you can see here I did import it persistor so this is actually linked to Redux now it's, that's where we point to what do we want to store while talking about the store you'll see that the provider as well is also pointing to a store so Redux Toolkit and Redux has this concept of a store. So the store is actually an entry point to your Redux. So it, does, it receives your actions and, um, and, and, and your, mainly receives your, your, your actions and your reducers. So, okay. So while we're here, why are we here? So what is going to happen is that we see that there's a store there. So we've by now, hopefully, you get the gist of what is happening here. The simplified version of it is that you have to wrap your app in this uh, provider and then the passes gate. Provider allows you to pass data across the, the entry point, which allows you to pass it across the, the app. And then persist gate is the entry point which allows you to save data, to persist the data into your local storage. And then 
this root navigator is your actual app so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna go i, I won't talk much on the actual navigation parts but we can we can go through them uh meaning that the bottom tabs and the material top tabs i will go through them how i implemented them in this project but i think the important part is to explain Redux toolkit and then from there we'll talk about those two individual items so now i'll go to the store I'll actually go to Redux. so so what's happening here is that the app.js is outside the source folder so i'll go to so the source folder and then inside the source folder you'll see a couple of things which are happening there we have the assets which is your images you have the components which is your actual components that you're showing on your app for example we have the clearance which is the screen here okay and then what else you have we have navigation navigation is actual this folder contains the navigation of the whole app so you have the stack you have the top uh, the tab bars then you should have the bottom tabs as well which are here and then these are like these are the test screens uh, that we're having here and then we have the material top tabs which is happening here so this is all your navigation for the app you don't have to do it this way but this is how i did it for for the app so that you have navigation is done on one area and anything related related to navigation it's all here so all of them should be connected into one either like th this stack or, or the tab the stack navigator will take the details take the card and then they're all done differently and you can go to the different sections which explain each of the different uh routes for the app okay cool so that's what's happening there at navigation and then we have redux now redux that's where we have the logic of the app like adding to cart and then going to the cart and seeing the items it's all happening here so like with redux as well it's it, you can actually shape your redux folder in in, in several ways and like there's no really true way of doing it but then one of the concepts is that you should have a features features folder your features folder should have like the different features that you have for example like here is for the accounts and then here is for the cart itself and then you see that the the cart slice so because redux uses the concept of of slice so you have a slice for something you have a slice for the for the account and then you have a slice for the card you have a slice for the order so this one is the slice for the card so what the card does here is that you actually look so the, what, what what this cut slice does is that that's we have the logic of of the of, of the app in terms of like saving for example we have like add to cut uh, you have increment, you have decrement, and you have uh, remove items and clear items. These are all important parts in terms of, of the logic, in terms of the cut logic. So that means then like if we go to the add cut, so here we're adding the items to the cut. So we, we will have to for example let me go to the screen here and show you how the implementation works the way it, it will work in a screen um let me sh let's go to screens and then from screens we want to go to not home let's see if we can go to Today, today's deal which is the screen here yes 
when you go to screen. So we have to import use this page from React Redux. And then here we have to create that uh, dispatch. Then you actually see that we have this dispatch here. This dispatch here is saying that add to cut. So, so we actually use, you have to also import that this add to cut as well. You can see here under this Redux, uh, importing everything from Redux. So add to cut is saying that dispatch sort of like you have two concepts in, in, in Redux, you have dispatch and selectors. Selectors, you actually pulling the data from your from your store or from different components. Then with dispatch, you're actually pushing the data into uh, your, your reducers or, or your store, if you can put it like that, your initial state to your state. Let's use that word. So here, we're saying that we want to push an item to your initial state because if I go to the cut slice, you'll see that the initial state is normally empty. So if I go to cut slice, in the, here's the initial state. Initial, is, initial the state is empty and then we want to add to it. So like what happens here is that now what actually happens here is that now when you when someone presses on on this button here they're actually dispersing the item that they pressed on to the cart so so you're actually adding the items to the to the state here which is originally empty so this is the function which helps you do that and it takes in two things takes in a state and it also takes in like the payload. So currently we're destructuring the payload here. Uh, and then we're taking the ID from the payload. Uh, originally this could, this would have been action.payload. So we're destructuring the payload out of the action. So don't be surprised when you see someone else saying action.payload. Okay. And then we're saying that now we want to find the ID and check if the ID is equal to the ID which has been selected. And then if the ID it is equal to it, we want to go to that item and then increment. So, so that means like now we're saying that if you've already added in this item to the cut, we want to check that item and see if that item exists or by like the ID of the items called to the ID, which is already in the in the initial state. We want you to take everything in that state and increment the quantity. So if I press this one triple three times, it should, when I go to the cut, we should see it implemented two times. Yeah, which is, which is happening here, because we see four, because initially there was one. And then we're saying that otherwise, if if there's nothing on the on the cut itself, so we want you to actually push that item into the cut and, and give it a quantity of one, which is what we're doing. And then this is the logic if you want to increment the count as well. So similar to what we're doing here, saying that if you want to increment the, the count of the cut, so if I go to the cut and you want to increment the count here, so we're saying that you're gonna check if that ID exists if that ID exists, we're gonna add one to the, take everything we should have and then add one to the quantity. That is what's happening here. We want to decrement as well to same thing, check the ID and then you remove one. And then if you wanna remove the item, just check the item itself and then you filter the, the item which doesn't, the items whereby the ID don't match, you wanna, you wanna take that item out then leave, leave the rest. And then when you want to clear, you just simply return an empty uh, array, and then your cut is cleared. Then you have to export out the, 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 the functions or the actions. So that's, what you, that's what's happening here. And then you have to also, uh, your reducer, you have to export it as well, because 
when you, when you go to the store, you have to import that cartridge user. So we're importing the cartridge user here. And then what we're doing here is that we're actually going to combine the registers. So if you have multiple registers, you have to co we combine them here. So for example, now, of which we're not going to talk about, is there's an account reducer or slice, or and then there's an account and order reducer as well. So we're saying that combine all these reducers, and then we want to persist there those reducers. And then this is where you're actually doing the pe like persistence. So this is a persist config. We have to give it a unique key, which is gonna, which is the app is gonna look, when it's look into your phone, it will look for this key. And then here you're saying what type of storage. So if you're using mobile phones or smartphones, it's gonna be the async storage, which we're importing, importing it from a React Native async storage. Um, and then what else we're doing here? When you say whitelist, whitelist, you're saying which of the sl slices do you want to save the data? And in this case, we want to save the data of all of them. You can also blacklist if you don't want to save the data there. And then we have to export everything. So we're exporting the store. And then you remember we have to, we we use the store in the Apple JS, which is here. So that's where we use the store. That's why we're, we're exporting it that side. And then we have to import it here because you can see it's coming from uh, Redux and then store. Yeah, pretty much that's that's the whole app. And if you want to see a detailed uh, tutorial on how to use Redux Toolkit to do a shopping cart, uh, do put it in the description. In the comment section and then uh, like this video and subscribe i'll definitely do a follow-up tutorial if people are interested and yeah i'm also working on a on a longer uh, redux course that i'm gonna post to my youtube channel as well so subscribe if you are looking forward to that and yeah i hope you enjoy this content you enjoying this tutorial or oh, the was walkthrough yeah, have a great one. Cheers, y'all. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.